This GXCC racing action powered by Dunlop is brought to you by SPX Logistics, Dunlop, RME bearings and transmission, and driven by Bikers Warehouse. <laughs> GXCC round number four, the halfway marker of the 2021 championship and the classic race venue of Fentersdorp. This will be known as the cold one as all the pros were lined up, locked and loaded and wanting to rip the bars off before we rolled forward into the official start of the second half of the tour. Before the pro race got underway, we chatted to Vian Duplessis to talk GXCC and the numbers. Yeah, so fourth round of uh, the season and um, we were hoping for uh, that 300 mark again. That's always our goal, but uh, we do understand that it's winter time. We always uh, see that the numbers decline during winter. Look, this place is going to heat up nicely uh, today uh, after the start, uh, but in the morning it is a bit chilly. First gate, the big banger, OR1 Pro category, where it's Mikey Pentecost and the Dart, the two pinners to beat. Offline, Pentecost got the big pull, but he went down, going way wide on turn number two. That allowed Tyron Beverly to get his official first big hole shot since signing with the Franchise Co. and CIT squad. Championship points leader Dart was in the two spot with Hein van Eekirk and John Kerr de Lange, making it a top four pinners in the championship running out, but Pentecost was way at the back of the pack and would have to charge through to see clear air. Second gate was the massive OR2s where we saw Brawler as the man to beat, but the kid that's good off the line is the Devastator, Devin Smith, who once again ran the numbers out front. Brendan Kotzer was locked into a very creditable third place in the early stages, but it was clear that a two-horse race was going to be the running with the Devastator and the Brawler elbows up. For the OR3s, it's hard to fight against the thunder that is Dav Cocker. He is unstoppable off the gate every single time but he pushed a little bit wide and that allowed Tucky and McKenzie. McKenzie got himself in front and then turn number three, it all went wrong. McKenzie looping it out, taking down almost the entire field and the guys that stayed out of trouble would have a clear run. The rest would chase from the back of the pack. Clear air then for the reigning champ and the man that is trying to get his hands back on the trophies once again. Peter Karam and Storm Phil Yoon had clear air with Taki doing the chase down. Wilson, McKenzie and the rest of the fighters would have to come all the way from the back of the pack. In the high school 125s, it's John Berta who is the man on fire at the moment himself and Derek Karam have been the pinners on the 125 high school gate. But anything can, does and will happen on the high school 125s. But it was once again clear air for Berta.
back on the gate for this stacked gate of seniors. And Blau almost had his nose cut off as it was the return of Guy Henley coming out of nowhere on the Yamaha to get the numbers going. Himself and Thompson were positioned well in the ones and twos with championship points leader Blau having to pick up the pieces of a bad start, his worst start of the season. But coming out the whole shot queue, he was already positioned to take over the lead out into the felt. Kochi was strong as well as the second of the Yamahas as the rest of the gate threaded the needle. For the Masters, once again, Farmer was going to have to get those elbows up as he debuted for the first time in 2021 at least, the big 450. Van Skolkveik was there almost at full fitness back from his foot injuries. Carl LaRue was lined up to see what he could do as well after he walked away with his first win at round number three. Francois Swanepoel and the rest were doing the chase down. Farmer, though, had the grip on the early laps. Small gate this time around for our new blood that is the veterans class. We've seen around about six or seven of them throughout rounds one, two, and three. Round number four was four riders on the line, all trying to chase down on Ernst Slabbert, who is the man to beat on the gate and in the championship as he's nailed down wins, wins, wins. He won it, a clean score sheet and another win at Fentastorp. And for the ladies, the whole shot machine that is the Cole Duplessis pulled the pin and saw the cheese once again, but it wasn't long until she got swept around by the championship points leader, Leah Haygate, Colin Nierbjör, whilst doing the chase down, went down. That blew the field wide open as the pro ladies and pro-am ladies lined up elbow to elbow. Before we head out on the course, this is what the track was looking like according to the master, Vian. It's a bit choppy out there in some sections where we slashed the grass. Um, so uh, the quads will open it up nicely for the two-wheelers. Two-wheelers are gonna go out uh, like a tight and twisty in the beginning. Then they're going to have uh, about 15 k's of uh, faster stuff. Still need to keep their eyes open. And then the last section, uh, tight and twisty, bumpy, little bit of uh, water splash. But this place makes it so awesome. Uh, there's, there's so many features here that we've used with jumps and uh, turns and twists. So very exciting. Here. Out on the course and the focus point on our pro ladies category where the whole shot machine Nicole Duplessis only dropped a couple of places after her incredible gait credited with a number six ride that keeps her inside the top six and potentially the top five for the championship going forward into round number five. Rie Marie Ellis who stepped out of the pro-am gate and is the top Honda lady on the tour at the moment once again bags and tags a number five ride. She enjoyed the technical layout of Ventersdorp. Mandy Pretorius, who is starting to say goodbye to the Yamaha, as it looks like she's about to ink a deal and step onto the Kawasaki squad under the peps and plastics colors, brought her Yami home inside of a number four, which should still see her try and challenge for a top three in the championship at the moment though. It's Zelda Mayberg who has her eyes on the prize with an incredible ride, an incredible season so far, and another standout performance at Ventersdorp, giving her third on the day and moving her into third place on the championship as well. Carla Nierbjör shook off the early crash. The blushes wouldn't be seen through her helmet, and she put her head down, put the hammer down, and clawed her way through the field to tough it out and eventually end up in the number two spot. She now sits second in the championship chase. There is simply no stopping the part-time GXCC and full-time MX racer that is Leah Haygate. She hasn't pulled every single hole shot, but she has taken every single checkers of the season. She is looking for the perfect golden season in 2021. Four starts, four flags, four wins for Haygate.
Oh yeah, definitely. The track was phenomenal. I have to say there was a mix of everything. It was windy, muddy, fast. It was a mix of everything, so it was great. Um, a huge congrats to all the organizers and everything. Fanta phenomenal event. Oh, that's the plan. Um, I'm just doing the GXCC for fun. My mot motocross is the main thing. So I'm just doing the GXCC for fun and enjoying riding my bike again. So yeah, I'm just feeling good and having a good time. That's all it's all about. Haygate on top and at the moment untroubled. Colin Nierbjör, solid and consistent as ever with number two spot ahead of Mayburg, Pretorius, Ellers and Duplessis, your pro ladies, top six pinners. The vets, the boys were out there enjoying the layout of the track and the three hour racing format that laid ahead of them. Stefan Bagnell walked away with a number four ride and he had some respectable lap times to boot as well. Willem Swickers has been a stalwart and a champion of the GXCCs for many years. He was one of the guys that really put his backing behind this new veterans class and he is currently sitting top three in the championship. Third place on the day keeps him on the box. Johan Bosch has been smashing and dialing his form in throughout the season. He does like the more wide open spaces of rounds one, two and three, especially round number three. That was the fast one. This time around, he had to settle for a number two spot as once again, it was one name and one man on top who already at this early stage of the championship has one hand on the championship trophy. Ernst Slabert knew that it was going to be a technical layout of the track so he put aside the big four-stroke and stepped onto his smaller machine, the 300 Smoker. Slightly easier, slightly less hard work to muscle around. He knew he didn't have to have the big legs, he needed to have the fitness and an agile machine. It was the right choice as Slabbert put himself on the tippy-top step once again. Confirmation of Slabbert on top and on top in the championship charts with Bosch, Swickers and Bagnell. Watch out for these guys to swap paint for the next four rounds before we crown our inaugural Veterans Champ. The Masters Gate was absolutely stacked, but it was a surprise to see Carl LaRue, our previous round winner, have to drop all the way down to eighth place. The course didn't work out for him and he's going to lose a ton of points in the championship this time around. He should be able to fight back and pull a ton of podiums and potentially another win before the season is out. Fricky Ellis got himself up there as one of our privateer entries on the old Kawasaki setup. Motocross setup as well, so the thing would have been a handful out there on the testing terrain. Ferdy Frederick was up the road inside of number six, the first to taste a little bit of podium champagne as GXCC scores points all the way through. But it's podium celebrations for the top six. Rassi Fenter on the track's KTM loved round number three where he could literally lean back and crack the throttle wide open. This was a mixed terrain and you had to be a little bit more careful in some of the faster sections and really pace yourself and measure your effort the whole way through. Francois Swanepoel is looking at a top three ride come the end of the season. He is being solid inside the top five, couple of top threes. Fourth place this time around splits the difference. Marty Poole, consistent as ever, and this was a Marty Poole track as well. He can turn his hand to every facet of cross-country, off-road and enduro riding, and it showed. The talent pool is deep. Marty Poole, rocking a number three spot. After suffering some injuries between rounds two and three, and having to really suffer through some bad times, Warwick van Skolkbeek was back on the money. He pulled the whole shot and he only dropped one position on the day. He is going to be taking the fight to Farmer at the second half of the championship. Van Skolkbeek for the Roos KTM squad with a number two spot. 
But Farmer now fully committed. It's four-stroke Farmer this time around as he gets himself onto the 450 and rocks his way out to his first big win on the big machine. Different riding style and Farmer is going to still take a while to gel with the bike, but a win will certainly cheer him up. Geez, no, you can say that again, hey? Yeah, we're fighting with the bikes the whole way. You know, there's one or two long straights, you can actually just get onto the gas and just chill. But the problem on some of those are braking bumps, they just start throwing you, eh? But yeah, we worked from start to finish. That was, that was an awesome route, thanks to the guys. That was absolutely amazing. Yeah, this beast of a bike, it's the FC 450 motocross bike. So we decided to have a bit of fun on a, a four-stroke, and let's see how it goes, you know? But um, it's, it's not a, a two-stroke. Two-stroke, you know, it's a little bit more forgiving. This thing, you have to be on it and making sure what you're doing it right, otherwise it just throws you through the corners. Yeah, look, obviously I was sick at the last one, so I couldn't make it to the last round, so I got a, a no points on that one. But um, yeah, no, we're there and it's a long championship. And we just need to finish it each one. And uh, yeah, if we can bring home the wins, even better. So with the drop points, Farmer is back on track. Nice to see Van Skolkveik having a good run and back from his injury woes with Poole Swanepoel. Swanepoel, watch out, he's a long game player. Fourth place this time ahead of Fenter, Frederick, Ellis and LaRue. Starting to get tasty now as we move forward into the young old dudes, the senior gate where we saw an incredible ride coming out of Ivor Chos. He gets his move on. He's been inside the top 10 the whole way through the season. And this track really, really suited him down to the ground. Peter Van Royen, the main man from RME Bearings riding under Bikers Warehouse colors, had his best ever GXCC run. Just one position off the big numbers. Seventh place sees constant and steady improvement coming out of Van Royen. JJ Rousseau was just up the road from him, the first of the podium places as he tippy-toed his way around the circuit. Up the road from him was a former championship runner in the GXCCs. He's been focused for the last couple of rounds on motocross and it's great to see Hanley swinging a leg on the Yami. He was good out of the gate but faded a little bit towards the end of the race. Fifth place will show that he has lost none of his skills, maybe just a little bit of fitness throughout his timeout. Thompson is a revelation this season. Lee is hammered down on the Pepsi Plastics, racing Kawasaki. He was good out of the gate. He had some problems though, dropping him down to fourth place. Thompson is starting to become a championship player with just four rounds still to count. Kochi once again sets himself up as the top Yamaha man, comfortably inside the top three, and this really suited his riding style down to the ground. Does a lot of training in these kind of areas, and Kochi will be buoyed by his top three ride, and he wasn't far off the top two either. Best ride of the season, and best finish ever at a GXCC since lining up in the pro senior gate. Yanni Potkita, riding out of Master Cars, Hatfield, got the job done very nearly getting close to the back wheel of Blau. But look at the riders he beat as well. Thompson, Kochi, Henley, Rousseau, Van Royen. It is a deep talent pool. Kochi was the second best on the day, the best on the day, the best on the season, and the reigning champion, Wade Blau. Didn't hang around at all, loved the layer of this track. It said it had a mixture of absolutely everything. Best day out on the bike for Blau. A win is simply the cherry on the top. Yeah, I actually loved it. So I remember riding here, I think I probably raced here about 2009, so a good 11, 12 years ago, you know, so, but this was really good. I really enjoyed it. Well, it's not, you know, it's never over till the fat lady sings, so anything can happen, and uh, we just got to keep ticking away. This bike was a rocket ship today, so I'm very happy. Thank you to the guys at the Roost, Olin Suspension, Cycle Works, Henderson Racing, everybody. Thank you very much. Blau, still the man to beat, but everyone is starting to get the catch up. Potkita, congratulations for him on his number two spot, best ride of the season to date. And then Kochi, Thompson, Henley and Rousseau rounding out the top six with an honorable mention to Peter Van Royen. Top finish in seventh.
The high schools is an interesting mixed bag. A lot of the riders have made the move up into the stack gate of OR3s. So this time around, a couple of different names, manufacturers and flavors hitting the top eight. Christian Swat brings the big red 125 Honda inside of a top eight with Sean Furry up the road in a number seven, chasing down on the back wheel of Matty Battersby. Battersby once again was the first of the podium places in a number six spot. Remember, Battersby has come in from focusing on enduro racing for the last couple of seasons. This season, it's absolutely everything. He goes EWXC, GXCC, he will race it all, and he's in line for a top six come the end of this championship. Up the road from him was Andre van der Vestes, and again, the 525 rider bringing home quite consistent rides throughout the first half of this championship. He may well end up inside of a top six come the end of the 2021 tour. Jason Leslie was brilliant off the line. He was running inside the top three on laps one and two. Just faded outside the top three podium placings, but fourth place gives Leslie, even with this crash in the water, one of his best rides to date. Joss Alexander, if he doesn't get the whole shot, he will make up for it when the laps start counting down. This time around, he gated outside the top five and plowed the field to finish inside the top three. Watch out. This kid is coming on strong in the second half of the season. Congratulations from us. It is a new man in the number two spot and a top ride on the season for Vian van der Merwe. He's been gelling nicely with the KTM 125 the whole way through 2020 and 2021. Now he is close to his first win of the season. But everyone is chasing down on the back wheel of this dude. Franchise company and CIT superstar, John Buerta, once again hammers the nail. It was a flag drop to flag drop. He got the pen, got the whole shot, took the cheese on every single lap, had a butter day behind the bars, and saw the checkers once again at Ventersdorp. It is going to be difficult to beat this dude for the rest of the season. Yeah, yes, it was a mix of, of middle lanes, lots of mud in the middle of winter. But yeah, it was proper fun. Yeah, it's looking good. Um, I think I'm first now. Um, yeah, and we'll just keep it there for the rest of the season. Try and take the W. <laughs> Bike's awesome. Thanks to Team CIT, uh, Franchise Co. And um, all our sponsors, Dunlop Tires, um, Uncle Justin with Cycle Works, and all of them. Thanks. John Buerta doing the business once again. Different flavors though across the board in the top five. Fiander van der Merwe with his best finish of the season in the two spot. Alexander consistent and solid in third ahead of Leslie, van der Vestazen and Battersby, his customary number six. First of the pro categories and after a huge dive in the whole shot queue, Vian Blom, the top Honda coming out of the OR3 gate, was rewarded just outside of the podium placings for one of his best rides of the season in the number seven. Up the road, Xander Marks on the 98 also kept his nose clean. It was a smaller gate this time around in the OR3s, but they made headway, enjoyed the layout of the track, and everyone did say this was a small bike track. The 250s were prime in the tech terrain. Peter Karam, who was running good in the early stages, went down super hard late on in the race whilst he was in a podium challenging position. He got picked up by one of the top pros, Vaynard Dalport, sacrificing his race to scrape Karam up and out of the way. Stormfall Yun also was running inside in the top three in the early stages, only dropped one position off the box. Fourth place will keep Stormy feeling confident as we go forward into round number five to officially kick off the second half of the tour. A short lift hole shot, but a great fight back and an amazing race put together for the first time by Carl McKenzie. He has been looking for this good ride and a consistent approach to his racing the whole way through 2021. 
and he's finally rewarding the faith that Peps and Plastics Kawasaki put in him with a top ride in third place. He was joined by his teammate Taki Bogiorgis who brought home a top five ride overall on the little 250 and second place also moves him up into the top two for the championship. With the championship leader out with a big crash on the day, that was Cocker. It's time for Matty Wilson to take his place at the very top. A win here in this amazing terrain suited Wilson down to the ground. He had a huge fight with the Kawasaki's, but the Husky man came out on top. And with this win at round number four, leads the championship chase heading into round five. Yo, yo, no, today, today was a difficult one. Going out was quite muddy into straight dust ball racing. Nice, tight and twisty rocky sections. Then you're going to the fast stuff. Couldn't see anything on the first lap behind Peter and Tucky. And yeah, coming to the end, <laughs> looked like a mud monster. <laughs> yeah, no shame. So I was tailing Peter for quite a while and he had a massive off, eh? Head over hills, crash. I had to stop by him to see if he was okay. Then eventually Devin Smith stopped and he waited. Then I came back and then it was me and Tucky. The last two laps and man oh man did he make me work hard for that one and yeah without the throwaways i think i'm first in the championship and with the throwaways davin should still be leading but it was a good day out time to sharpen those pencils the championship numbers are getting tight big win for wilson then but just moves up the order with the number two spot mckenzie takes his best ride of the season in third ahead of phil yun karam marx and blom or2's styler himself Tyler DeBrain out of Shimwell's Yamaha walks away with a number eight ride. Not the top smoker though. There was one smoker a little bit further up the road. Brendan Berger on the Roost KTM squad is doing himself proud. Always around about the five, six and seven. This time around, number seven ride as the pace up the road was stellar. The 250s were not hanging around at Fentestorp. Byron Poulton got the tag as the top smoker ripping the bars off the 250 he has come gxcc racing for one of the first times on the 2021 tour and just got a little bit out ponied by the four strokes up the road brendan kotzer was in an early number three ride remember this is his comeback season but he is well inside the top five as far as the championship goes number five spot on the day and running incredible pace the top five were not separated by much francois de Greff is bringing home the bacon every single time we go out. He is definitely putting his name in the hat for the top five for the championship. The muscular rider though, back a little bit with the tech layout at Fentestorp. Number four ride on the season. What a story for this kid as well. For Rubine Racing, Jean Nibur is the reigning champion coming out of the OR2 Pros. This is his first season lining up with the Pros and now he takes a third place and with it moves up into third for the championship heading into round number five. This is a story to watch. Nibua getting faster with every single lap and every single round. The Devastator is so close to dropping the hammer on the rest of the field. He took his first win at round number three this time around. He was all elbows up and had a straight out dogfight. Himself and Brawler throwing down some incredible lap times and racing, keeping us entertained the whole way through the tour. Devastator this time had to settle for the number two spot, but man, was he quick on the day. The Brawler definitely had to fight for this one. In fact, at one point it looked like Ian Rawl was gonna have to settle for the number two spot and had to think about the long game for the championship after taking a DNF at round number three. He waited for his time and it was the final lap where the brawler pulled the pin, got the cheese, OR2 win on the day and the overall win. That's two overall wins where the little 350 has outboxed and outboxed the bigger bikes up the road. The brawler at Fentersdorf was once again in sublime form as he took yet another Category win and overall. I really didn't expect this. At one stage I thought I'm going to have to take a second. Then I just pushed my head down and just pushed as hard as I can. But this was an awesome event. In the race I was just having such a good time. There's so much different type of terrain. 
this motocross section in the front with mud and then around millie fields i couldn't ask for better this is like the best race yes yes definitely last one i didn't add a dnf so not really happy about that so i'm gonna have to push to see if i can get the championship again brawler on top the devastator ran him close this time those are the two to watch for this championship for sure jean nirbua his best result on the season with third ahead of de Griff. Kutzer, Poulton, Berger and Styler in a number eight. Big bangers and these guys definitely had to work for it. This was not a big bike track, this was more technical, you didn't get to stretch the legs on the ponies too much, but Carl Nibua for Rubin Racing got himself up to a number eight. A fill-in ride this time around for almost retired Vaynard Dalport. He gets himself a number seven ride after stopping and picking up the pieces of Peter Karam along the way. Nice to see him getting onto the Kawasaki riding out of CIT and Franchise Co. Craig Alcock takes a number six. That's going to keep him inside the number six for the championship as well, as he also gels perfectly with the Kawasaki on the Pepsom Plastics factory squad. Alcock is improving every single round we line up. Not long till we see him inside the coveted top four. John K. Delanger running now inside the top three. Consistency is what he is all about. He starts every race, he finishes every race, he brings it home and he is going to now run inside the top numbers for the championship. The championship points leader with a very measured approach to this event. D'Artagnan Lobjoy got his tyre strategy wrong this time around, went for the soft rubber and was pretty much running a slick by the end of lap number one. Lost a ton of time with a wheel change and that's why we see him down in the number four spot. And that's also why we see the championship start to tighten up. Dart still holds the lead, but he has to share it with someone else going forward into round number five. His first big hole shot of the season and great to see the 714 of the franchise co and CIT of Tyron Beverly get the numbers going. This is a standout ride for Beverly and he's going to know that he is one of the players to watch for a win in the second half of the season. Beverly on the number three spot moves into the top three for the championship as well. Hunt Van Eekirk, who just has a ton of bad luck. He's got a bit of a cloud over him this time around. He kept it clean, kept it safe. He actually said to me after the race that he rolled off a little bit just to guarantee a finish. A finish this time around gave him second place, his highest result on the season so far. But they were all fighting against Magic Mike. Mike Pentecost has been hammered down the whole way through the season. After lap number one and the first couple of kilometers of the first event where he got tangled up in a fence, he has been simply unstoppable. Wins, wins, wins. And that's exactly what he has to do. And with this win at round number four at Fentersdorf, he moves into the joint championship lead. Himself and Dart will be elbows up for the rest of 2021. Another win for Magic Mike. Yo. No, today today was a I wouldn't say it was a big bike race. It was quite tight. Um, rocky. We had some motocross jumps. It was uh, it was a super fun track. Um, I wouldn't say 100% suited to the 450. Um, I had a bit of a, a, a rough day today. But yeah, we managed to fight back and yeah, all in all it was a good day. I had a silly fall on the start um, and then I just had to try and pass the guys back. I mean, everyone in, that, in the R1 class is fast. Uh, to try and catch them and pass them in the dust was just, yo, it was hard. Um, by, the time, by the time I had gotten to the front, I've just, my, my actual vision is gone. My vision is blurry. So this last lap, uh, Ian Roll caught me and passed me and, and well done to him. He flipped and rode so well today, yeah. I think uh, we just try and stay consistent from here and uh, see how it goes. Uh, I'd just like to, before we end this off, I'd just like to thank uh, Fox Racing SA, um, my wife, uh, my dad, and, and the, the Coxstad Cowboys team just for all the help and support. Mikey on top, doing what he has to do. Great ride coming out of Vanny Kirk as well with Beverly in the number three spot. Those guys are standouts at the moment. D'Artagnan Lobjoy fourth place, but still in the championship lead ahead of Delanger, Alcock, Delport, and Nibua. 
That concludes our pro show coming out of round number four at Fantasdorp. Watch out for Hollywood Hills this coming Monday where we tag all the support classes and draw a line under round number four. CC Racing Action, powered by Dunlop, was brought to you by SPX Logistics, Dunlop, RME, bearings and transmission, and driven by the Bikers Warehouse.